Hello, thank you. Good morning, um, all you intrepid souls who went home early last night. So thank you for uh, showing up this morning, and um, maybe you'll be able to hear me before the, before the crowds arrive. So I'm at, my name's Lorian Gable. I'm a co-founder at Figment. Um, I'm going to try something a little bit different today. I'm not going to do kind of a vendor pitch. I'm not going to talk about my company. Maybe wax a little philosophical about 10,000 feet, where I see we are um, in the development of blockchains generally and what it means for Web3. So, when we get Figment out of the way, we provide staking infrastructure to institutions and individuals. Um, we, billions of assets are, are staked on our platform. And we also provide tools for developers who are building smart contracts, managing their dApps um, on these proof of stake protocols, which we support. OK, that's Figment. Awesome. Um, so if you have tokens you want to stake, think of us. If you're a developer, check out our tools. Awesome. OK, let's get on that. Let's move beyond that. So um, I'm making kind of a pretty bold claim um, that staking is the foundation of Web3. Uh, you'd be like, you know, is he high on his own supply? What's he talking about? It's just staking. It's not a big deal. Here's why I think it's important. Why don't we first um, define Web3? Uh, Web3 is a wonderful term because it kind of means nothing and everything to anyone. Does anyone want to, is anyone bold enough to to make a definition of Web3 for me? Anyone want to try? No. No one. OK. See, it's difficult, right? So I'll tell you what Web3 means to me. I think Web3 is what comes after our current internet tech stack, our public private tech stack. And um, I think we all have in our gut that something's not working quite right, um, whether you're concerned about privacy or data extraction or value extraction. Um, Anti-social algorithms, why do I look at my phone and get angry? That doesn't seem right. That seems bad. So I think we, you know, whatever your political persuasion is, whatever your background, you kind of have a feeling that something's not right. And I think Web3 is what's going to be a better internet. And I think it's going to be powered by blockchains. And I think it's going to be powered by proof-of-stake blockchains. So hear me out. So, that, so that's Web3. What is staking? I'm not talking about staking where you um, our liquidity, our yield farming, or lending out your tokens, or staking to one of the one of the um, lending platforms. I'm talking about where you're staking actually to a protocol. So um, if you have Ethereum, you're running a node, or you're having someone like us run a node for you. If you have a Solana token, then you're staking that to a node. And essentially, what you're doing, um, unlike if you hold a Bitcoin, and before people start throwing things at me, this is not a negative statement about Bitcoin. This that ship has sailed. We love Bitcoin. We love proof of work. But the difference is, as a token holder with Bitcoin, you don't participate in the, the protocol itself, obviously. When you hold a proof of stake token, you can do that. So you can run a node, you can participate in governance, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and most importantly, you can then share in the benefits of that community. So what's that mean? If you come from traditional finance, now all of a sudden this token looks like maybe not just a speculative asset or a store of value. Now it looks like something you can apply some traditional valuation frameworks to. Like, this is something that has value over time. And so that's pretty cool. If you're a developer, it means that instead of Apple taking 30% of your profits or your revenue for what? I don't know, for processing a transaction, you can actually share in the benefits that you bring on your application to that blockchain. OK, so um, that's pretty important. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and what does that tie into Web3? So we often say you know, at Figment that we're building a new financial system, new economies, but what we're really building is community. Like everyone here, these are all entirely new communities. I don't know, I've, been, I've done the Miami, New York, London circuit, and like the enthusiasm, uh, the diversity of people, the engagement, it's just like awesome. I don't know, I mean, we kind of launched in a bit of a bear market, and it's, it's really fun. I think you guys are all seeing it. You're all here at 10 in the morning listening to some guy talk about it. So it's like, I think we all sort of feel it in the air, right? And so um, what you're seeing is really these communities being built. Um, and the, way, the thing about community is like, it's not a one-way street. To be in a community, you have to participate, right? It doesn't work that way. And so when you stake your token, stay with me, you're participating in this community. You're governing, you're running a node, you're securing the blockchain, the value you stake is securing the blockchain, people will build on it. So you are, and then you're going to derive the benefits of that community, um, that value over time. So um, instead of an internet that takes our data, extracts value, um, uses a, takes away our privacy, maybe our sanity, 
If you stake tokens and you participate in these new protocols, which are building the new internet, you can actually be part of a larger community and derive value from it over time. So that's why I think staking is the foundation of Web3. And so stake your tokens, save the world, build a better internet. That's my pitch for this morning. So um, yeah, I have any questions on that. Let me get to this gentleman here. I, I totally agree with the sentiment you're saying, but part of staking means that you need some capital and significant capital to invest. I know there's pooling and nominated right. proof of stake and that kind of thing, but um, surely that excludes a whole bunch of people that can't stake, they can't get on. Well, there, there's lot, so, so yes, you have to contribute. Someone has to contribute some value to the network. You know, the equivalent is, I mean, if you look how blockchains work at a fundamental level, in proof of work, you take your cash, and you convert it to expensive mining equipment and electricity, right? Um, in the case of staking, instead of buying electric, you know, instead of buying ASICs, you're basically buying value in a token and then locking it up. So yes, at some core level. However, there's lots of ways to earn tokens on a given protocol. Um, there's DAOs for governance work. Um, there's lots of foundation grants. As a developer, you can you can create a, it's a permission. You can create an application which then earns those tokens. So. You're right, at some level, someone has to contribute that original value, but I don't think it's the only way to participate in these, in these proof of stake blockchains. Any other questions? Gentleman here. Do you, do you want to comment on social tokens and some of the, the smaller little communities and how that fits in with this as well? So, I don't know. I don't, so, I think they're somewhat controversial. You know, some people have some, some mixed views of them. Um, I think it's still early, um, but I think they're a form of participa participatory blockchains and communities. In other words, that the people, um, rather than someone else having your profile and then extracting all the value from it, you, s in theory, have some control. So I think there's like six different models right now being being tested and people are playing with. Um, but I think over time, it's probably a better way to do social networks than what we have now, which I don't think anyone agrees is a fantastic way to run a social network. So. Anybody else? Um, Lauren, what about the uh, risk with regards to staking and, and how should um, retail investors uh, look at that space with regards right. to the right. yields that are being offered? Um, what advice would you give investors that are looking for higher yields, but obviously it doesn't come at a uh, risk-free rate. Right. Zero. So what are the risks with staking your tokens? Um, in general, you can't lose your principal with some educations, which I'll talk about. Um, if you are running your own node and staking your own tokens, then if that node goes down, then you're going to miss some rewards. So depending on how technically competent you are, if you choose someone like us and we don't do our job, then you may miss some rewards. So you want to make sure you have an SLA and someone who can back it up. There are some edge case risks, um, something called slashing, which is double signing, which is like forking a network or double spending a token, the equivalent of. Um, and in some protocols, it's protocol dependent, then you can lose some of your capital, not like 100%, but usually a few basis points. So those are the risks to be aware of. Um, if you're doing it yourself, then you should know what you're doing. And if you're outsourcing to someone like us, you should make sure that we know what we're doing. Gotcha. So gotcha. we've never been slashed. So. OK, well, that's great to see. That's yeah. great to see. Uh, any other questions? Gentlemen here. Let's go to you, and I'll come to you next, sir. Um, is staking becoming a commodity service? Like, how do you differentiate one oh. staking provider from another? Yeah, great, great question. I appreciate that. So we spend, you know, in, in our particular case, there's a lot more than just running the infrastructure. You know, like, here, here's what the staking stack looks like from my perspective. So you have. Um, we run a lot of bare metal in physical IDCs. Um, thought it was an obsolete skill. We come out of the data center space, but there's actually good reasons for running your own servers and running bare metal. Um, and then you run those in conjunction with the major cloud providers, um, has decentralization benefits, et cetera. And then on top of that, there's a data layer and a reporting layer. So you would think open ledger, easy to track my rewards, know what's happening. Well, anyone who's like interacted with a blockchain knows the data structures are a mess, and it's difficult to pull that information from. So um, in our case, we provide a fairly sophisticated reporting and data infrastructure, either by API or in our dashboards. And then I think most interesting above that is we have a governance and research group. So we have a team of 10 plus people. It looks somewhat like 
a daily proxy service meets sell-side research, except with a bunch of DGENs, so who are embedded in these communities early. We participate in governance. Um, at times, we'll actually write proposals if we see there's a technical upgrade. And so we really think, you know, selfishly, we might do it anyways. We own these tokens. We run on these protocols. So we think it's important not just to be like running extractive infrastructure and that's it. We think it's really important to participate. But our customers generally find it useful. So, you know, what does governance look like on blockchains today? Uh, Kind of a shit show. I think it's going to be determinative over the long term, but it's like a board meeting every day with a thousand people around the world who don't know each other, maybe don't like each other, um, and it's very difficult to do basically. You know, there's a ton of Telegram or Discord channels. So we have a group of people who all they do that is participate in those communities, wrote, write back to our um, or provide information updates, uh, make bulk recommendations, and sometimes even participate. participate. Um, and then above that, there's a whole set of like SLAs and insurance and stuff like that. So I think from a commodification, sorry, to answer your question directly, I think if you're just looking at like a raw node server, yes, probably becomes commodified. But if you care about all these other things that I think is important for participating in these networks, then there's a lot of value add to be, to be found there. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if you could, you could comment on the, on the tension I perceive between keeping staking rewards high enough that people actually want to do it, right. but that's, that's a security budget that you need that's, to that's right. pay for, inflation, right. transaction fees, so problem that way. And then, and then if staking rewards get too low, five, four, three, two percent, then you're, you're probably not left with the right. people you actually want as, you, as your stakers. And so how to, f how to land at a good um, equilibrium there? Right. So this is how I talk about staking rewards. Um, staking rewards are generally, there's like, at the network launch, they're usually the yields are very high because uh, the network, the protocol, the rules have been built so that people lock value up, so they're incentive to do that. So there's a curve going the right way. So starting from this way and then going down over time, starting from that way, going down over time, um, based on sort of the internal economics that have been defined by that protocol. And so that's like the internal inflation rate and starts out high generally and then declines over time. And there's another line that's coming up from here, which is the transaction, the value captured on that protocol over time. So think gas fees in Ethereum. So this number should, in theory, if people are using the protocol, building applications, running smart contracts, um, if there's activity on that protocol, that number should go up, and then they're going to meet in an equi equilibrium somewhere. And so that's going to be the value. Now, um, I think that if a network's not being used, if no one's doing anything on it, then this number's going to decline, this number's not going to go up, and you're basically going to get a network that's not very secure and people aren't going to build on it. So you need to like, get that right. And it's still pretty early. Um, you're seeing some protocols like Terra Luna, which are all transaction fees right now. So all the yield there is from stablecoin usage and Anchor, et cetera. And then you have other protocols which you know, are very much all essentially inflation. And there's no real usage yet. So I think you kind of got to watch those two lines. And the ones where that one doesn't go up are going to fail. So. Got it. Any more questions for Lorian? Laurie, and that was a pretty cool presentation. Awesome. I liked the style. Thank um, you. And in particularly okay. the recommendation of going to bed early and board meetings with a thousand <laughs> right, people. I can't right. wait there to you see go. it. Well, Big round of applause. I appreciate you this morning. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much, Laurie. Thank you. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Really appreciate that.